Welcome to Startup Health TV, where we celebrate the entrepreneurs and innovators who are transforming health. I'm Logan Plaster. It's my privilege to be here today with Nicole Cook from Alvi Health. Nicole, thanks for joining me in the studio. Thanks for having me. Um, it has been fun to watch your progression since you joined the Startup Health community pretty recently. And you told me before that you spent, I think, nine years working at Epic, working on integrations. And I'm just kind of curious, what did that experience kind of teach you as you move from more that, that enterprise level, now you're working at a startup? Yeah, absolutely. So seven years at Epic. Oh, seven, okay. It felt like nine, honestly. <laughs> it could have been more. Um, but it was an amazing experience. And I think that, you know, when people ask me, like, what my founder superpower is, I always yeah. tell them it was my Epic experience because it taught me a lot, um, you know, about workflow, about integration, about how do we actually build technology that works for people. Um, and, you know, with how we're thinking about things at LV, it's really played a pretty big part um, because, you know, part of our belief is that, you know, when you think about technology and AI and how we're using it in healthcare, there's a lot of fear about, um, you know, technology and AI dehumanizing healthcare. Sure. But, you know, from our perspective and from what I saw at Epic, um, and if you go to the doctor, you'll notice that, you know, the, the provider, the nurse, they're spending most of their time on their computer. So they're really not interacting with the patient all that much. So my argument would be that really the only way to rehumanize healthcare is with AI and technology so that we can automate and actually improve workflows. Okay, so Alvi Health, level set with us. What, what did you build? Yeah, so um, at LV, our mission is to advance health equity and improve health outcomes for all. And we help healthcare organizations to target the populations that need help the most with AI-driven insights and autonomous care navigation. Okay, so you've shown me the, the dashboard of data that you bring in that helps a provider think more about health equity. Talk to me about some of those important data points, particularly ones that might be new to, new to a provider. Absolutely, well, you know, I think as we're sort of focusing more and more on whole person care, mm -hmm. social determinants of health is becoming more fully, you know, integrated into modern day healthcare. But it's not a new concept necessarily. These are things that have been around for a long time and have been, you know, impacting patients' ability to really care for themselves. Yeah. So I think the biggest change is really around some of the documentation requirements that are coming into play, the regulatory requirements, um, which we should definitely talk about that. Um, but, you know, I think that, you know, the biggest thing is really just how do we seamlessly incorporate these social needs into their existing workflow so that we're not overburdening them with more work, um, but it's also a way that can have the biggest impact on not only being able to care for the patient and their outcomes, um, but also in a way that makes it easier for that provider or that payer to actually um, be able to start to address them. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was a good lead in. So tell yeah. me how the regulatory <laughs> environment is shifting as, reg as regards social determinants of health. Yeah, so in 2020, the president passed an executive order to advance health equity. And since then, there's been all sorts of new regulation and legislation that have gone into effect, um, impacting quality measures, impacting other types of regulatory requirements. And all of, you know, the TLDR is that all healthcare organizations are mandated to measure health disparities and demonstrate how they're advancing health equity at their organization. So the really exciting thing, though, is that beginning on January 1st, incentives are going to begin mm. uh, for SDOH and for health equity initiatives. Really? Okay. Yes. Uh, break that down for me. What kind of incentives? Yes. So this is huge. Huge for us. Huge yeah. for LV2. Um, so uh, first thing is that they're going to reimburse for social needs assessments. Okay. And then the second thing is that they're also going to reimburse for the time spent addressing unmet social needs. Really? So really all of the things that we've built our platform around doing and supporting will now be directly reimbursable. How were those things being assessed in the past and then sort of contrast that with how they'll do it on the Alvi dashboard? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, one thing I want to point out too is that, you know, this is sort of a lived experience for me, seeing these regulatory requirements and the shifts and, and how this can impact adoption. During my time at Epic, it was the same year that incentives began as a part of the High Tech Act. Sure. So that had this massive surge of EHR adoption. You've seen this before. Seen it before. Yeah. So seven years later when I left, um, there was nearly 100% adoption of EHR systems um, amongst eligible hospitals. So, I mean, the amount of, of adoption was 
you know, phenomenal, just seeing how much that had an impact. And so the same thing is really happening with health equity and SDOH currently. So in terms of just, you know, how people are documenting today, I would say that, you know, first problem is that it's not scalable. Um, and the people that are sort of managing social needs today are already have like really, you know, um, big caseloads. And it's hard to follow up and manage um, you know, and, and ensure that the patients are actually, you know, getting connected to those resources, getting their needs met. I'm envisioning an overworked emergency room physician or nurse trying to document these social needs while also dealing with the crisis. Exactly. And, you know, all the other things that they're supposed to be doing. And, um, you know, with that, it, there's lots of challenges, obviously, but um, at the end of the day, the, the patient's not really getting their needs met. And, you know, there's not only are they not getting their needs met, but also it's very reactive. We don't really know who has these problems until it's too late. They're in the emergency department because they're having these complications from a chronic condition that could have been prevented, you know, if they had their basic needs met. Okay, so now so, co- contrast that with the ALV paradigm. Yes. So basically what we do is we help to proactively identify people at a higher risk for social needs so that we can anticipate, you know, which individual actually needs help. And from there, our platform helps to automate workflows and um, helps with documentation so that we can help to um, better track and manage those health disparities and those barriers to care. And what's really exciting is we're working on a fully autonomous care navigator that will help to close the loop on resource referrals. So not only are we doing the prediction and the identification of the social need, but we're actually helping to address the the disparity as well. That's awesome. So you're still early in your journey. When did you found the company? In the summer of 21. 21. Okay. So during... During COVID, you were, you were sort of a COVID company? A bit, yeah. I mean, it's sort of like coming off the tail coming end off the of, tail of end. COVID. Yeah. Um, what has the market response been like? Well, it's been really interesting. When I first started the company, it was still sort of early in this awareness of health equity yeah. and, and health disparities in our country. And, you know, I had been working at Same Sky Health, which is a, a, a you know, a patient engagement digital health company that focuses on outreaching to underserved populations. So I had been living sort of, you know, health equity for a while yeah. during my experience there. Um, and so it wasn't a new concept to me, but, you know, for many people, they still didn't really understand, like, actually, okay, what is health equity? What does that mean? Um, and why are social determinants of health so important, you know, for health outcomes? So I think that, like, since the company has evolved, the level of awareness and recognition of, you know, that these are things that are critically important to health outcomes, but they're also not going anywhere. And I think that, you know, rather than, you know, you know, for a while it was sort of we were talking about it a lot, but we weren't really doing anything about it. Sure. But now people are actually starting to do something about it. And, and that comes along with those regulatory requirements and the policy changes. So it's no longer this nice to have social impact thing, but it's something that, you know, people have to do. But at the same time, um, you know, they want to do it because yeah. it's the right thing to do. And, and not only that, you can save lots of money, reduce excess medical costs, have these reimbursements. So, you know, there's really no reason not to do these things anymore. Um, What are you most excited about in terms of upcoming traction or milestones as you look to the next like six months? Yeah, we're, you know, I'm super excited about all that's to come. We're growing like crazy right now and getting a ton of traction, getting a ton of really exciting partnerships in the works. Um, One of the things I'm super excited about is that um, we're going to be participating in the Mayo Clinic Platform Accelerate program. Congrats. So thank you. Yeah, we're really excited. Um, We get access to a bunch of patient data. So this is something, you know, for an AI company, uh, you know, being able to train new and existing models off of it is, this, the whole team is like really, really excited about nice. it. But having the opportunity to work closely with Mayo Clinic and learn, you know, from them and, and receive the mentorship and, you know, have an, a possibility of, of piloting with them at the end of the program is really exciting. Fantastic. Nicole, I love what you're building. Exciting to see how the regulatory environment is coming along. And really interesting your note about how you've seen this before and you have sort of a, a sense of how this shift uh, how dramatic it could be, and um, now you're going to get to test that out at the Mayo Clinic. So yeah. excited to see, and we're going to be watching your progress in 2024. Awesome. All Thank right. you. Thanks, Nicole.